Hey guys, uh, today I want to show you how to remove a print head on an Epson Stylus Photo R280 printer um, and similar printers of this type. Uh, so what we're first going to need to do, we need a, a Phillips head screwdriver in order to do this task. Uh, first we're going to turn the printer on and then we're going to press we're going to press the ink button so the carriage moves over to this uh, opening here so we could have our carriage go back and forth. So I'm going to wait for that to kind of start up and then we're going to press the ink button. Now I'm going to press the ink button and if there's low ink on any it'll go to this arrow and if all ink cartridges are good it'll just go there and then I'm going to unplug the printer. Now with the printer unplugged, we can move this carriage back and forth and that's what we need. So we're going to open this front door unit. There's uh, four screws that we need to remove in order to get to the inside and it'll be much easier for us to work from there. Um, there's a screw right here, one right there, you can see it there, and there's two on the back. So let's get started on the two over here on the front. Got that one. Sorry. This is the one that I got first. We don't have to remove the top cover. It's easy to remove actually, but we don't have to do it. So we can just keep everything together and less work. And then our second screw. Right there. Then we're going to turn the printer around. Let's remove the cord so it's not in our way. There's two screws over here. So one on the left, one on the right. Let's get those. Now we can lift this top straight up. And we are looking at the inside of the Epson R280. Our print head is in this carriage unit. We'll remove all the ink cartridges. This is where the print head is. You can see it. So the next step that we need to do, you don't have to remove this, but if you want to, you can put it out of the way. It's not really going to be in our way. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver in order to remove this piece here, that one with chips. But first, on the right, like if you're looking at it right now, on the right side, we need to remove this plastic piece first. So let's do that. I have this kind of a, there's this latch right here that we just need to lift up and push the plastic piece down. There we go. So it went down a little bit on latched. Here we go, this is the part. Then we need to disconnect this, these two cords here. This one cord uh, wire right here that is connected to the back side with a uh, chip reader. So <clears throat> the latch is a lot of times on for this piece is on the right and left side. On this particular one, it's on the back. So we'll need a flathead screwdriver. We're just gonna put it in here. The latch is located about over here in this area. Um, so what we need to do is just put a screwdriver back there. And as we do that, we can just push this piece up by these where the chips are, we can just push it up. And you should be able to Push it in from there or there we go I unlatched it there so basically I kind of uh, I'll, I'll let you know what it looks like in a, in a second here on the other printer and so you have a better idea um, I have this other printer that I already removed the print head from um, this area right here is where that chip reader is locked into 
So here's a closer look. It's in these areas. So it needs to unlatch from here, pushing this way and up on left side, the back side. So when I'm putting in a flathead screwdriver on the back here, you can see what I'm doing is, here you go. See where my flathead screwdriver is? If I push it kind of to the left so I have more space with the screwdriver, this is the area over here, if you're looking on the side. Um, and you can see where the screwdriver is, the flathead. So when I'm there, I'm pushing it kind of like this here and that unlatches this piece. So I found it one of the most difficult when removing the sprint head, but as soon as you remove that, and while you are kind of trying to unlatch it with one hand, you're unlatching it, the other hand just kind of, you're pushing the piece here up. So let's get back to our printer that we're taking the print head from. Okay, so I think I have the right side up now. Now I'm gonna do that, make sure that the left side doesn't go, the right side doesn't go down and then the left side I'll just do the same thing here. There we go. Don't need to push it hard as soon as you get on it. It's uh, And then, like I said, you need to disconnect it before you do that. So you just pull it straight out. And this is the piece. Um, that was a little bit more difficult to remove. So now pretty much our print head is over here. We have three screws on it. You can see one on two and three that we need to remove in order to get it out so I'll just go ahead and do that there we go that's a Phillips screwdriver with a little bit of a, ten, a thinner tip um, the one that I have on my screw gun, it's a little bit thicker. So, but it's standard size Phillips head screwdriver. Just if one is too thick, find another one that's a little bit thinner. So we have the three screws out. And now, um, what we need to do is just pull it straight up. believe we're gonna disconnect later and just to be safe or I mean not to be safe but another thing that we really need to do before we pull it up there's this panel on the right that I kind of missed right now but it's never too late <clears throat> at this point at least so also a latch kind of like the same one we removed on this side this one is a bit similar just pull it straight up and that's where we have our wiring for the print head so as we pull it up we have our wiring right here on this side and that's where it's connected uh, my screw fell in there you don't want to let yourself do that so just disconnect two at the same time then when, when we reconnect it it's going to be we're going to connect the bigger one first so this is the print head. Let me pull this out. This is what it looks like if you're trying to clean it or replacing it. If yours is just bad, this is the way to do it. And let's put it back. We're gonna put the same one back in. We're gonna go through the steps together. So first, of course, is connecting this print head. Well, let's remove this screw from here. So, let's connect this cord. It goes right in there in the top wider one. We can do it like this here. And make sure you reconnect it firmly and in the right space. I'm sorry, it's a little bit hard to see, but I'm doing my best here not to damage anything reconnect it there we go it's pushed in fully now the smaller wire goes in here 
pushed all the way in. Now it's best to just put it in there straight down like so. And we can see our wire is in good condition. It's not bent or anything. Then we're putting this piece back in. It goes in like this here. So just like that, kind of use your both of your hands. Make sure you put it in the right slot. You go put some more light and it's locked in. Then we're going to put our screws back in. There we go. Now we have that back in there. Now we're gonna put this piece right in. It's it's pretty simple. It's just gonna lock in with these here. These are the two harder ones to get from the back. But when we're putting it in, it's just going to latch in if we're putting it correctly. And there we go. It should be level over here with this bracket with the print head. And then we need to just make sure we reconnect it correctly so let's do this this could be a harder part but could be not as hard here's a better view you can see in here that the connection is just right there so perfect positioning um, some light in here so let me just pull this cord back you can see where the connection is there so we need to get this cord right in there and be careful if you ever just one thing is uh, that i should mention if you have put some grease or some dirt on this timing strip make sure you wipe it before you put the cover back um so here we go we're gonna try to position it and push it right in and we should be good so everything is connected this is connected the print has connected to the wiring this wiring is basically where it was and one last thing on this side just need to put this cover back on and this one we're doing from bottom going up i believe that's how it was to be sure so yeah where the wiring is right there sorry so we position it to those and then we push it up. Now it's latched in. And pretty much that's it for this one here. All we need to do at this point is put the cover back on, which is simple to do. Okay, so the cover goes back on like so. It's very simple, it just lights on. You can see the... Um, connections there I mean the how it just flush in there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the screws back on and also another thing if you want to test your print head before putting the cover you should be able to do that there is one sensor for the cover open but it doesn't really interfere with printing as I've noticed this one right here so um, you should be good and then two screws up front one in here and one in there and i've shown you a close-up of the location of screws before so if you missed it it's at the beginning of the video turn your printer back on let it restart and it's gonna ask you for uh, ink and so on and you should be able to print one thing that you should keep in mind that if you're trying to replace a print head Make sure your ink cartridges at least have at least 50% ink in them and they're not dried up where you know you, you've used them recently or uh, things like that. Um, because a lot of times printhead is uh, not the 
main issue. It could be partially clogged, but a lot of times it's because ink has air in it or is not functioning properly, especially that you refilled ink. Sometimes they're not refilled the correct way um, or some aftermarket ones, which I like aftermarket, but some are not built properly. So this is how to replace a printhead on an R280 and similar print printers. Uh, hopefully it was a help to you. And uh, we're going to do another video on how to disassemble the printer to get to certain parts. Um, uh, watch that if you're interested. But if we were able to help you with this one, please like the video, subscribe and share. I can see that you um, see my reflection there. But um, anyway, that's partially me. <laughs> Thank you for watching and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks.